Thank you for joining us for this month's STEM Pro Live. I'm Steve Watson, the Maricopa County School Superintendent, and we take great pride in every month bringing to your students industry professionals who are sharing their journeys and their experiences and what they've learned through their personal experiences and professional experiences with our students. So let's check it out. Good day. My name is Jen Markman. I am a senior process engineer at Medtronic. Our Medtronic campus is in Phoenix, just east of the Phoenix airport. We are a facility of around 900 employees, ranging from anything from assemblers who work directly on the product uh, to electrical engineers who do a lot of circuitry design and uh, robots uh, to chemical engineers like myself who develop various processes. Uh, my Medtronic career started about 17 years ago. I started as a chemical engineer in our product analysis lab. Um, my primary role is an integration engineer. So what does that mean? It basically means how, how I gotta figure out how to identify those risks and figure out how to make everything fit together. It's like a big puzzle and, you're, and you've got all the pieces on the table and now you've gotta put all the pieces together in a fashion and in the right order. And so we get to problem solve when issues arise. We get to um, work as a team to build that next generation product that, that figure out how that puzzle fits together. So day to day, I spend my days between the office or you know, these days, the home office and the wafer fab. The wafer fab is basically a really big room that's super clean and we build a variety of products. The clean room is a large room where we have to get dressed in bunny suits. These bunny suits are kind of crazy. They cover all of our clothes, our hair, and our skin. And that's not only just to keep us safe from all the, the, the clean room chemistries, all the, the toxic stuff, but to also prevent um, a little bit of fuzz from our clothes or dirt from my shoe or the smallest particle that I can't even see coming into contact with those, those wafers, those, those plates that we're building. And because then that would cause um, failures and that's something we definitely don't want. And then another part of my job outside of, of, of my team is WISE, which is Women, Science and Engineering. Here I have a very diverse team of, of men and women who work on culture, on outreach, we reach out to schools, universities, um, development opportunities. So we try to help our career. Um, we discuss other things with our employees, both inside and outside Medtronic to grow as a whole. So I'm pretty excited and I love my job. So for me, it all started when I was a kid. I grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada. And if you asked me what I wanted to be as a kid, oh my gosh, I had something every day to be different. One day it was an astronaut. The next day it was a mailman. The next day it was a veterinarian, a flight attendant, a teacher, a dentist. Oh my gosh, uh, the list goes on. It was different every day. Uh, I just knew that I really liked math and music. My dad was an architect and my mom was a teacher. And so they were very supportive of my vast interest as a kid. Um, early influences is that I would say that it wasn't until high school that I came into STEM. Is back in the early 90s, is STEM was not as prevalent as it is today. Um, and so back in my sophomore year of high school, I had a chemistry teacher named Mrs. Gale, but one day she told the class that chemistry is everywhere. So of course, me being the punk that I was, I said, no, -uh. and then she proceeded to ask me to name something that I would thought did not have anything to do with chemistry. So after a while, I thought long and hard, and I thought, hmm, okay, ping pong table. Of course, I thought I had her, you know, I'm sitting here proud of myself, but she replied, nope, you're wrong. And she came up with glue in the table, the color and the dye of the board, the fabric of the net, material of the ball. She just kept going and I was in awe. 
And then she took suggestions from the class. It turns out, oh my gosh, she was right. Everything in it has chemistry, everything. And so that really changed my view forever. Throughout high school, I continued uh, to be a lover of, of chemistry, but I was also active in sports and uh, in music. So after high school, um, I graduated and started college at Arizona State University as a concert bassoonist. I absolutely loved music and I loved playing for people. But throughout my first year, like I really felt something, something was missing. It was a awry. And after a bit of reflection, I remembered that I had that love of chemistry from Miss Gale that she instilled in me back so many years ago. So I took a look into chemical engineering because I loved that math as well. So with some support of my friends and family, I switched majors. And from there, everything changed. Everything got great. I became involved with the Society of Women Engineers, which is a group primarily of women students and professionals in engineering. They really helped me to learn and meet new women in my field because overall, I was really, back then, I was one of three in my graduating class. And so I felt like I filled that void. And then I proceeded to receive both a master's and a bachelor's in chemistry, uh, excuse me, in chemical engineering from ASU. Hi, my name is Brittany Wong and I'm a wafer fab process engineer at Medtronic. I started Medtronic three and a half years ago as a sourcing intern. Um, and I quickly fell in love with the company and its mission. And I it realized that that's where I wanted to be. So for the next two years, I interned in contract while I was getting my degree at Arizona State University until I was able to start full time just a year and a half ago into my current role. So what do I do today? I'm currently working on the next generation diabetes sensor. What this means is that I spend my time purchasing and qualifying tools that will be able to leverage on the manufacturing line. I make sure that we're able to run experiments and optimize the process to ensure that it's robust and we're able to scale it up to when we're actually in production. I'm currently working on patterning a chemical layer that's new to our campus that we actually are formulating and coding here. And this involves a lot of planning, data analysis, and a general deep technical understanding of the process as well as how that is influenced by other processes. As a typical engineer in process, I work with different backgrounds and different functions on our campus, including sourcing, finance, manufacturing, and of course the customer, as it really takes a village to accomplish everything we need to set up and sustain a successful production line. So when I'm not working from home, I go into the office, um, go into the clean room, do several design of experiments, data analysis, and really just collaborate with my counterparts in the process. So I have a wonderful counterpart who coats the wafers and we work together to figure out what goes wrong, troubleshoot issues with the tools, and really work together to make sure that our two processes are able to interact cohesively and grow together so that we're able to scale that up to a manufacturing process. In addition to my technical work that I like to do, I'm also involved with Women's Network and the Women in STEM and Engineering, which is one of my favorite aspects of my job because the technical stuff is fun, but being able to make a difference and reach out to the communities and doing things like this is what makes it um, really impactful and sparks joy throughout my day-to-day -day life and make me feel like I'm making a difference. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona and grew up in the Maricopa County school education system my entire life. My parents were always adamant on excelling academically and so from the beginning I did pretty well in school. The first time I realized that I was good at math was when I joined the honors math class in Mrs. Graziano's in Quail Run. And it felt really good to be recognized for something that I was good at as well as continually be challenged. In middle school, my mom was actually pushing me to look into being an engineer because she knew I was good at math and science and I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do yet. And around this time, the Center for Research, Engineering, Science and Technology program or CREST at Paradise Valley High School was just starting up and looking for new freshmen to start their inaugural class. And it really intrigued me and gave me the opportunity to explore what this engineering thing really was. 
And I learned very quickly that the curriculum was comprised of all the different engineering disciplines, job shadowing, internships, group projects, and a big workshop to where we can do woodworking and um, cutting metals and putting together an actual product. And that really helped me build a strong foundation going into college and understanding better what engineering was. Uh, I, I was one of the only seven engineering students that was a woman out of the 50. And it really gave me an early idea of what it was like to be one of the only women in the classroom. Mr. Howardell, our engineering teacher, was actually also a big influence on me because you could tell that he was genuine and really cared about his students succeeding. And I think that when you can tell a teacher really cares is how you make the most impact to your students and how they move forward beyond your class. So going into ASU, I was involved in an Engineers for Business Club where it actually focused on engineers learning the business skills needed that we didn't really get in our traditional course load. So that was one club I was mainly involved in. Um, and I'd like to say that BME impressively had a larger amount of women in the classroom as well. So it was much more balanced and definitely refreshing to me. So look, I, I don't know about you, Brittany, but I am totally excited to hear about what our students' questions are, are that we can help them with. Absolutely, let's hear some. All right, we're going to jump into the live question and answer portion of the broadcast. So ladies, if you can rejoin our classes here. Uh, students, if you have questions, keep sending those into the chat box. We do have those coming in right now. Nice, so that was super Hi, exciting. Guys. We have all these questions that are, that are coming in for you right now, but I'm really interested in, you know, what is it that you guys love about what you're doing? You guys have such you know, amazing opportunities there to make a, a difference for people. But what is it that excites you the most about doing a job like this? So that's a great question, Brian, is that uh, one of the few things that I really enjoy about my job is that, as I mentioned before, is that I love chemistry. And I get to do it every day. I get to take crazy metals like gold and silver. I get to mix them with dangerous chemicals. And all in while, I get to design and I get to make things. And they're not only going to help my friends and family but your friends and family have a better quality of life i love that jen and same for me i love that no matter what job function or product you're working on it's going to eventually help a patient and potentially save a life sure. and i also love with the nature of my role being able to collaborate with different functions and diverse backgrounds i think that's a really fun aspect of the job we just love our job we're like the nerds well, that's exciting because uh, most people, when they get up for work in the morning, they're not really excited to get out of bed and they're not really excited. So the idea that you love what you're doing really kind of makes it enjoyable to wake up in the morning. And, and that's exactly what we should all be looking for. And that's what we want our students to look for is to find that job that they're passionate about, that they can be excited to wake up to go to. Definitely. Absolutely. So Mr. Anway's class, uh, he has a fifth grade class out at Kyrene de Colina, wants to know, uh, what type of medical devices you guys make there at Medtronic? So great question. Um, Medtronic uh, makes a wide variety of products from that help from basically your head down to your toes, um, which is a pretty cool place to work. Um, but here at our facility in Tempe is that we primarily focus on things of the heart and of the spine. And so anything to do with cardiac devices. So if you've got um, issues with your heart, um, some valve issues, et cetera, and then also people that have chronic pain. Um, so if they've had injuries to their spinal cord um, or have chronic pain that, uh, that we can help with. Um, one other thing we do is Parkinson's, is that a lot of our patients are Parkinson's uh, patients that have essential tremor or um, kind of mild tremors. And we also do deep brain stimulation devices as well. And as you can tell from those names of deep brain stimulators, pacemakers, it involves a lot of electronics. And so we're a big microelectronics hub of Medtronic as a whole, which is a pretty cool place to work. And it, as Jen said, touches all the way throughout the body, which is a pretty cool place to work. Great question. Um, so you guys both mentioned the word wafers. And I know, Brittany, you talked about working in the wafer lab. 
Now, when I think of wafers, I think of the small little waffle-like cookies. I'm, guess, I'm guessing that's not what you guys are making and putting inside of bodies. What's a wafer? So a wafer is a little uh, circular disc that we use as a vehicle to put chemistry and metals and different polymers to create a product. Um, so it is circular like those little vanilla wafers, but it's a little different. And we have a wafer fab, which is where you actually manufacture those wafers. It basically helps us to um, have something rigid to put other stuff on top of. It's kind of like your dinner plate, right? Is that if you got like a dinner plate, you can put mashed potatoes and green beans and all kinds of stuff on the top and still have a platform to carry around with you to the living room, the kitchen, the dining room, et cetera. So that's what we use that wafer for, is that it's basically a carrier for all those materials Brittany just mentioned to help us move it from stage to stage. That Great makes question. more sense. That, way, that makes way more sense than putting little cookies inside of people. So I have a, I have a question from a student out in the Gilbert Public Schools. Uh, his name is Vicente, and he wants to know, how do you use coding in the creation of wafers? Can you say that one more time? So the question was, how do you use coding in the creation or the use of wafers? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. So there's different ways you can code a wafer, and you can code different polymers and chemicals so you can spin coat it which is basically the wafer is spinning around and you can deposit a chemical you can spray coat it and you can slot coat it so there's many different ways but it's essentially being able to put the chemical where you want it and not where you don't want it essentially so in addition to those those chemistries that Brittany mentioned is that we also put a whole bunch of metals down those metals will help us um, communicate from one side to the other and sometimes we use um, what we call sputter, which is basically you just take a metal and it's the smallest little atom. You're basically throwing it at the surface and it sticks. And this little nice smooth layer will come up. It's kind of like smaller than a grain of sand and we're just blasting the surface with these. And you get these nice layers and we just take and build up layer by layer by layer. So there's a whole bunch of ways to coat a wafer um, and we use all of them for uh, a different product. That's fascinating. We have a, a, another question that's coming from a teacher uh, out in the East Valley at Leading Edge Academy in East Mesa. Uh, and she teaches a fifth and sixth grade class. And they wanna know, does Medtronic make prosthetics? Great question. So um, we do not make prosthetics, but we actually make artificial joints. So if you get your, um, for example, hip replaced, um, or an artificial disc. Um, so in, in, uh, in spinal surgeries, um, sometimes you need spacers or some hardware, for example, is that we also make the screws and the rods for, especially for um, like scoliosis patients, which is the patients that have a, a curve in their spine, is that we make a lot of the spine hardware um, and some also some nuts and, nuts and bolts, if you will, uh, for other joints and uh, around the body, but we do not um, physically make the artificial limbs themselves. Great question. Well, I'm due for a knee replacement pretty soon, so I'm going to have to give you guys a call. Perfect. So I see some people uh, getting gowned up in the back, and we had a lot of questions asked from our students about why are they called bunny suits? Any idea where the name bunny suit came from? That's that, a great question. That I is want a to know that myself. Fantastic <laughs> question that you have literally stumped us. I'm I'm gonna guess is that uh, it's an industry uh, an industry kooky term, if you will. Um, there's varying levels of bunny suits. Um, I know you saw in the videos that some of us have just um, a gown on, gown to our knees with just our head covered. And then as you see some of the folks behind us, as well as in the video, you saw us cover our entire. Uh, even our face and just leave open our eyes. Um, and then in other facilities, um, you also have breathing apparatus, so you can't even exhale. And so there's there's differing degrees, um, but uh, I'm gonna have to say, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are the best questions, right? The ones that we have to keep finding out more answers for. Yeah, now you gave us homework. I love it. <laughs> So I have a follow-up question for Mr. Anway's class, and they want to know, uh, you guys both talked about problem solving as one of the, the things that's kind of daily as part of your process, and they want to know about that, just about the process. 
do you guys follow the same process as other engineers or do you have a set process that you guys use for problem solving at Medtronic? So we're big advocates of design for Six Sigma. And so we try to implement those techniques of stepping through different problems, like looking through what the input, the output, what could potentially be impacting your problem and try to control that and figure out how we can really optimize each of those factors. Um, we are very big on collaboration. So we have big meetings and talk through issues together. Um, we're very inclusive on making sure that everybody's involved and getting different viewpoints. Um, so we make sure to think through everything that we need to and uh, make sure we make an objective decision. To, to add to that is that Brittany's absolutely right. We're, we're all about design for Six Sigma and design for manufacturing and reliability. Um, but I think the core, I think I think it starts even for for our for our students out here is that we come up with a hypothesis, right? Is that what what do we think happens? And then sometimes through our experiments, DOE is designed for experiments, is that we try to test that hypothesis. And um, I, and I, I'm a big proponent of sometimes it fails, and that's okay. Is that sometimes failing is as much of a learning process as success and so you always learn from what didn't work as much as what did work and so we are a big proponent of, of, of outlining those experiments um, note taking we are crazy with our lab notebooks um, and some uh, clean room paper um, but it really it that we do we do follow a very specific process um, just so we can make sure that we get all of those i's and t's crossed and and we look at the problem um, from a big picture rather than, you know, what we think because we could and, and might miss something that way. What an awesome opportunity for all of our students to think about failures differently. You know, to think about everything that we're doing is we're learning something for the future. We're learning something that we yep. can be applying in a different situation in a different scenario. So thinking about that as a holistic process. I love that. So uh, Al Johnson, who is a health, health and career teacher out at Destinations Career Academy at Insight, uh, would like to know about field observations. Do you guys ever get out and get to observe the surgeries where these things are being implanted into, into patients? Um, and like, I, I guess that was kind of the question. Sure. So I'll, I'll start this one is that, yes, we do. And it's fantastic is that Medtronic is very open company with our physicians, as well as our hospitals, our clinicians. Um, and we have an open dialogue is that, you know, as engineers is that we, we want to improve things, make things better, make things, uh, you know, just robust and crazy. But sometimes it comes down to what does our patients need and what does our doctors need? And so we have that open dialogue with physicians. And we do get to go into um, there's specific programs. It's it's a, uh, follows a, an extensive amount of training and preparation. But uh, there is a, an event that we do get to witness, and it in it's very um, uh, patient specific as well as procedure, etc. Uh, but we do get to witness um, the implant of our devices, depending on what it is and and how it's helping the patient. Um, but that way we get to um, have that 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 face to face is you know is there something we can do to improve and make it easier for implants or make it better for the patient because what we do here is that um, we make these but ultimately is that we want to ensure patient quality and and happiness so and even people we work with have some of our devices too so getting their feedback on future generations of products has been super helpful and really ties you to the mission of why we're doing this in the first place exactly i love it so Robin Flight, who is a eighth grade science and STEM teacher out in the Chandler Unified School District, wants to know if you can tell her class more about robot assisted surgery. Is that something that your company is involved in? So we do have robo robotic assisted surgery out in Colorado, I believe, and mm -hmm. they do all the R&D and they create the product. We don't have too much of that here, so I can't speak to that too much, um, but I've seen videos and it's Super cool. So we do um, a lot with uh, robotic surgery. It's, it's, it's a evol or evolutionary for us. Uh, we also do a lot of robotic navigation. And so in brain surgeries, 
is that uh, you can't just, you know, um, open the brain like you do a different part of the body, you know, to investigate what's going wrong. And so we do a lot of robotics and, and mapping of different body parts uh, to kind of basically have the eyes inside the body without opening it up. And so there's quite a bit of work going on, and, and, and Brittany was right, is that it's all up in our Colorado facility, uh, and they are, they are um, leading it. So it's great up there for all the hard work that they do. So we have lots of questions coming in from our students, and they want to know about, one, the picture that's behind you. Is that a uh, supersized quarter, or is that something showing scaling? <laughs> and then also those plates that are next to you guys, are those plates an example of anything? Great question. So no, that's not a supersized quarter, although if anybody has one, I totally want one. Um, no, but that is an actual quarter. Uh, it's one of the fancy mint ones, you know, that, that we have to buy, uh, so it turns out pretty in the pictures. But that is our latest uh, Link 2 device that was just released in May. Um, it's kind of our, our, our latest device that has hit the market to help our patients. It's a diagnostic device, so it helps um, basically monitor the heart and the activity of the patient to tell the doctor what's going on um, kind of without them being in the office. It's, it's a very cool device. And then these, these um, that's a clear one, so that's not a good example, but these are the wafers that we were talking about. Is this one's got, you know, some metal on it. It's kind of shiny. I, I don't know how well you guys can see that. But um, this is that metal process to, of, of throwing atoms onto the surface. And this is how it all starts, is that we just build them up layer by layer. And it's, uh, it's, uh, th this is the beginning of a product. So we have so many amazing questions coming in, but I know we're getting a little short on time, but I'm just fascinated listening to both of your stories and just thinking about the fact that Brittany, you know, early on your mom recognized that engineering might be a career path for you. And you were able to find some inspiration, you know, through the Crest Center and stuff like that. But Jen, you had a, a, a different pathway of following music as a passion into college and then kind of refining your career, your, your career passion for science. If you guys could go back and you could talk to yourselves back in middle school, back to elementary school, what would you encourage yourself? What would you encourage our students that are sitting out there thinking that this might be a job that they're interested in? I would probably say to my younger self, as somebody who is a bit more reserved, to not be afraid to ask questions and speak up because you just want to learn as much as you can and also just be open to new experiences and opportunities because you really just don't know what you'll enjoy until you try it out. That's pretty close to, I think, what I would say, Brian, is that um, I think the world is is a pretty big place. And I would say to my younger self is go explore, is that get outside, go go look under the stars, go look at space, go for a hike with your family and friends, learn about the desert, uh, pick up a new book that you would have never picked up before, or go to a, a different website and learn all about it. It's that the world is such a big place. And, and what else can we learn that we don't know today? Because you don't know what you don't know. And uh, I think that's pretty cool, is that to learn something new every day is my goal. So I think, I think I tell my younger self just to go out there and explore the world. Well, I would agree. It's definitely difficult to prepare for a job if you don't know it exists. So getting out there and exploring and learning about new things and learning about what you're excited about is such amazing advice for our students thinking about, what do I, where do I wanna go? Where, what, what do I wanna do for the rest of my life? So that's so awesome. Thank you so much, ladies. This was really great to learn more about what you guys are doing there at Medtronic. Thank you so much for all the work that your company is doing to make our lives better. Um, we really appreciate you guys. Thanks, yeah, guys. Thanks. It's been fun. And thank you, students and teachers, for joining us today. If you missed any part of this broadcast or if you'd like to send this on to one of your colleagues that might be interested, you will get a link uh, in an email as a follow-up in about a day or so. You'll also see an opportunity to fill out for professional development hours that's embedded into that message. So teachers, if you're looking for those PD hours, please click on that and we'd love to get those back to you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next year with STEM Pro Live. Thank you, ladies. Bye-bye.